standard went like this. Suddenly went more uh, up to date, more clear, less decorative, and, and more um, powerful. He reinvented the Paris Opera Ballet. He discovered Sylvie Guillaume, who was a gymnast. I mean, he put her in the core and then elevated her within very short order into Etoile. He discovered Charles Jude, he discovered Manuel Legree, Laurent Hilaire, Elizabeth Platel, some of the greatest dancers of the 20th century. I, I think that this period was really a, a dynamic period uh, during which uh, you could see a, a change and a progress. It was very excited, exciting for, for, for many people, for the dancers, for, the, uh, for us, for the people who like uh, choreography and dance. After a few months of Rudolf being here, the audience suddenly realized that something was happening in this theater that they have never seen before, that this company could be one of the greatest in the world. Rudolf bought this flat around 1983, just before he became artist director of Paris Opera. And we cook a lot of risotto, we make a lot of party over there with a few friends. Well, it was very nice. Rudolf's cooking, <laughs> Rudolf's cooking abilities amounted to going to the kitchen with a frying pan and saying, Rick, what I do with egg. <laughs> He's, he didn't actually know, you know, the basics of kitchen, of making, of, tea. of making tea or coffee. He didn't know what he didn't know what money was. It was all done for him, you know. And all of a sudden, to see Rudolf <laughs> with a frying pan in the kitchen, <laughs> and a sort of kimono dressing gown, trying to you know the eggs and that, <laughs> to die for. He had lots of friends, uh, but um, he was very lonely. He was very often in his flat, alone watching television, videos, and things. And he asked us around, like people like Patricia Ruan, or Genia, or myself. And he needed a lot of uh, warmth, which he was not always getting. He was giving a lot, and I don't think he was getting back enough. Define me what home is. Home, it is where somebody is waiting for you. Home was this theater, where somebody was waiting for me to do performance. The stage is a home. Rudy, he was a gypsy. You know, he had uh, luggage ready to go anywhere, anytime. So there was one time to American tour, one time Japan tour, one time Italian tour, uh, or Australia, or whatever. He had a contract where he could be absent for six months. He was never off absent for six months. I can uh, I know that because we had sometimes to call him in the other end of the world at three o'clock in the morning to talk about casting or who rehearsal or who would do this or who would do that. I mean, it was literally like this. But he would never leave us alone. It is seven minutes before the hour. Well, it was a spectacular evening last night for ballet at New York's Metropolitan Opera House. Nureyev sent the world of dance a-spinning. The New York and Americans absolutely adored him, adored him. And he would say, 
Oh, it would be so nice if we could have a little dinner together. Would that be all right? Just a few people. And then phone would ring. I just have another friend arriving. Could he come? So there we are, another plate. <laughs> Rudolph is interested in, I think, escaping his humble beginnings because he was essentially self-made, self-taught, coming from the Ural Mountains of the Russias um, and from really a, not more than a peasant background to achieve this international superstardom. And although he was, uh, I, I believe, one of the richest artists of all time, he nonetheless, I think, was afraid that it was all a fantasy and was all going to be taken away from him. And so the Nureyev of the dance world and the Nureyev of his private life were two separate persons. And he lived many different lives in the heterosexual world and in the gay community. He was homosexual. I mean, maybe he was bi, I don't know, but he was definitely homosexual. And, and he enjoyed it, and he enjoyed his sexuality, and he enjoyed his body. I mean, he was, he was very proud of his body, and he had every reason to be. It was a beautiful body, and it had, it had done him you know, proud during his life uh, with what he was able to achieve in the dancing world. He loved the nightlife, and that didn't always include um, going to a lot of rich parties. So if it did, he then went on somewhere else afterwards, to clubs or whatever. You know, it's been almost 20 years since I've been in this building. It used to be a bathhouse that I managed for seven years. Now this was the stairway to paradise. This took you down to a sauna, to a steam room, to a swimming pool, but basically it took you down to the place you shed your towels. And that was extremely important in the bathhouse world. be a major celebrity, in here you were safe. I don't know frequent Nureyev was, I guess, a frequent visitor. Uh, this is not to imply he was here every night, every week, but uh, yeah, he, he did come and he was not Nureyev when he walked through the door. I think in a way celebrity did for him, if you'll forgive me, what sex did for him, which is it soothed him, it tantalized him, but it didn't save him from anything. The first image when I met Rudolf for the first time, I remember I, I entered that apartment that I, I didn't know at that time, but I was going to go so often after. And Rudolf was sitting in his uh, sofa. I was both uh, excited and a little bit afraid, I have to say. He needed a doctor in France. I didn't push to, to become his doctor because anyway, Rudolf was not the kind of person that you had to, you know, you, didn't, you couldn't say, I'm going to push to stay and uh, no. He was, I didn't do anything. And after one month, he called me back, and then we started to see each other again. Uh, Rudolf came one day uh, at the Paris Opera, and uh, he said to me, I'm not so well. I have some, something to do with the exam. And one week after, he said, uh, I have something. And uh, I, I understand what, if he says that to me, I have to understand quickly, you know. But uh, after, we never spoke about that. He, he knows, I know. And so he said to me, Luigi, I want to be very sick soon. And I said, Rudy, what do you have? Well, I'm going to be very sick and 